before we start today, I have to tell you about State Farm Agent Brian McDevitt. A lot of our listeners have gone to him for all their insurance needs, and he's been very helpful in getting them the coverage they deserve. There's no games with Brian. He's just here to help and make sure you feel safe. So if you have insurance needs and you haven't called him yet, what are you waiting for? Dial up the number, 630-796-2662. That's 630-796-2662. Or find him online at brianismyagent.com. That's ryanismyagent.com, and make sure to mention Sports Talk Chicago. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I want to start today with this. Anyone here have an ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend? Sure all of you do. There's a difference between you breaking up with them and them breaking up with you. And for those of you who have gone through this, I'm sure you understand it. There's a difference between them leaving you and telling you goodbye versus you ending the relationship on your own terms. You know that. It's true. When you end the relationship, it's up to you. You said, I'm not happy. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm done. And you leave. When you see your ex on the street or walking around, there's no ill will. She'll have ill will towards you, but you will have nothing to say. You move down. You found someone new. And there's no issue whatsoever. Now, if you were left, if your ex told you, I'm done, and you saw them, yes, I would not be happy. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see him. There'd be no point. It would only lead to anger, sadness, distress. In that situation, I would understand booing. I would actually get it. Go ahead, boo your ex. But if you broke up with them, you moved on. They're an afterthought. They mean nothing to you anymore. So if you saw them on the street, chances are you wouldn't go up to them and boo them and berate them and tell them you suck. Bears fans have a decision to make on Saturday. And I'm sure you've seen all the press about this. Mitchell Trubisky is returning to Soldier Field. Preseason game, of course, so the game means nothing, and how he does really won't make a difference. I mean, he could throw for six touchdowns. The game is meaningless. It's an exhibition. People are acting as if it's a real game, but it's not. doesn't matter. People are billing this. The Fields and Trubisky Bowl. Who's better? You can't tell in a preseason game. So there's no point in even engaging and that discussion, and I'm not going to do that. I'm here to talk about booing, and I'm here to talk about what he did, believe it or not, for the Bears, and how things went south. Now, for those of you who've listened to me, yes, I'll admit it, I was a Trubisky supporter. Not ashamed of that, but at least I'm logical enough to understand what his limitations were. Be a top 10 quarterback in football? No way. <laughs> Had some people saying that. I was not one of them. At his best, he'd probably be around 17 or 18. At his best, with a great team around him and with the weapons he needs to succeed. I thought last year he was the better quarterback, plain and simple. One more games, did better in the offense when he had Bill Lazor calling plays. Was more mobile than Nick Foles, and hey, they made the playoffs and didn't win. That's not the point. The point is, for four years here in Chicago, to his credit, he did his best. May not have been spectacular, may not have been Patrick Mahomes-esque, Deshaun Watson-esque, but winning record, Pro Bowl appearance, Two playoff appearances. 
He did everything he could to win over this fan base, and nobody cared. I mean, the night after he was drafted, there's a story right here. I have it in front of me from Jason Leisure of the Chicago Sun-Times. It said he was booed. He was booed the night after he was drafted at a Bulls game. Quote, Grabinski has been taking heat for Pace's mistake of trading up ever since he got booed at a Bulls playoff game the day after the draft. So from day one, no one was happy. During the NFL draft this past year, when the Bears drafted Fields, that night on ESPN's intro, they talked about how a draft pick could ruin your franchise. They show a picture of Mitch. Jamarcus Russell or Ryan Leaf would be a more acceptable image than Mitch Trubisky. I will never call Mitch a bust. Because he isn't. A bust is Jamarcus Russell. 45% completion percentage, two years in the NFL, losing seasons, gone. Ryan Leaf. Tons of picks, one year, gone. Josh Rosen, even, to an extent. Those are busts. Even though Mitch will never be as good as Watson or Mahomes, I will definitely take 29 wins, 10,000 passing yards, playoff appearances, Pro Bowl. I don't care if you don't like it. Those are facts. I'm showing you the facts here. This is what Mitch did in the Bears uniform, like it or not. And just because you didn't get your guy doesn't mean he has to suffer. Leisure said, quote, Don't boo Mitch Trubinsky when he returns to Soldier Field. That'd be petty, misguided, and embarrassing. All the exasperation of the Bears drafting Trubinsky should be directed at Ryan Pace. Boo him instead. That is, if you could find him. Thank you. That's correct. It's not Mitch Trubinsky's fault. He was drafted at number two, and to his credit, never complained. Never did. Criticism, constant. Fans after him. A mob, an angry mob after him. Virtually no supporters, publicly. And the guy still won games. Quote again from the story. He never lost support from people in the building, including the locker room, because he worked constantly. This isn't a guy who squandered his chance for recklessness and entitlement. Jamarcus Russell, Ryan Lee. His shortfalls in mastering the playbook weren't from a lack of trying. He was gritty, and he never dodged blame. There are a lot of people in this world who can never take blame for anything. He always said, that's on me. And he worked his butt off to be serviceable. In this town, too. And look at the way he was treated. This guy can't even post on social media. You know that, right? He never posts. Because when he does, everybody goes after him. There were memes made about him for marrying his wife. Come on. Get a grip, people. You broke up with him. He didn't break up with you. So there's no reason why he should be booed. It'd be way different if he said, I hate all you guys, I'm out of here. And then lit it up somewhere else. I'd boo him. Like when LeBron James got booed in Cleveland when he came back after going to Miami. That was acceptable. I understood it. But to boo a guy for putting in all this work, for being a part of the team for four years, for leading them to two playoff appearances, making a Pro Bowl, being a winning quarterback, makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm not saying this because I like Trubinsky or because last year I supported him. I'm just saying this as a common sense thing. I mean, I opened this show talking about it. 
if you break up with somebody and you see them on the street, your ex, you're going to go up to them and boo them and berate them? No, you moved on. You have someone better. It's over. If they broke up with you, much different. That didn't happen. He didn't say I'm off to greener pastures. He's a backup in Buffalo. <laughs> That's not greener pastures. He's worse off. He was starting for a premier franchise in the NFL. He was the starting quarterback. And to his credit, he won games, or the defense won him games. He still won games. The record is 29 and 21. Threw for some yards. Had a couple of playoff runs. That's not boo worthy. There have been worse athletes here in Chicago, by far, who've done less for their teams. And they never got booed. There were times in which guys weren't the best. They weren't booed as often as what could happen on Saturday. I'm seeing fans very excited to boo him. Come on. Be better than that. You know what they say. If you can't get over your ex, you still love him. So if I were you, I wouldn't boo him. <laughs> that means you still love him. You still have feelings for him. I don't think you want to admit that when you have Justin Fields waiting to take over this team. <laughs> so I guess everybody still has feelings for Mitch Trubisky. They must. <laughs> everybody wants to boo him. They must. Come on. <laughs> Let's be sensible here. You have a brand spanking new quarterback who's going to be great or should be. Why do you even let Trubinsky have a spot in your head? I don't get that. You've literally been given everything you've been asked for. Good quarterback, mobile quarterback, new age quarterback. Throw down field, accurate, poised, better. You've been given everything. And you're still hung up on your ex? You're still worried about what he's up to? Come on. Must be apparent then. You all must have feelings for Mitch Trubisky. That's the only explanation I have. And if that's the case, I guess a lot of people still want him back. <laughs> I don't even get why this is a story, really. It's a preseason game. I mean, it'd be different if he was the Bills starting quarterback, regular season, here we go. Not the case. Like last year, when Watson and Trubisky faced off. Big deal. Bears won, too. Wow. We did a video on it. That's when Mike North came on my show and said, Mitch is better than Watson for beating him. That was fun to talk about. It's a real game. This is preseason. And the worst part about it is that he actually won games. He did good for this team in this city. Actually, off the field, good guy. And the reception he's going to get is, I hate you, I'm going to boo you. That's so wrong. Oh, why does everybody care about his feelings? He's an NFL player. I care about his feelings because the man can't even post a picture on Instagram. He can't even talk about his wedding, a joyous event in his life, without being berated and made fun of. I don't think he asked for that. That's why I care about his feelings. And because the guy actually can't. It'd be way different if this was Jamarcus Russell. Way different. Wouldn't even be on the same level. I'd say boom into oblivion. 
because he didn't try, didn't care, wanted the money, and then left. He cared. Mitch actually cared. Wanted to get better, tried to get better, didn't work, move on. The fact that people are actually contemplating, or if not saying, I'm going to boo him, is so wrong. After what he did for you, he did nothing for me. Hey, he did get to watch two playoff games for the first time since 2010, on top of it. I know it wasn't all because of him, but still, he was the quarterback. Look, everybody has a choice. I'm not going to sit there and regulate and say, oh, you booed him, you're a bad person. No, you're a fan. You have the choice to do whatever you want on Saturday during the game. My recommendation is, don't boo him. No need to. By booing him, you acknowledge you still have feelings for him, and uh uh-oh. You're saying he didn't do a good job for the Bears, despite working his ass off. And you're saying that you're still hung up on your ex when you have such a great new player to come. Remember I talked about this a couple of days ago. I live my life by wondering how something could benefit me. Every decision I make is based on that philosophy. Will this benefit me? No, not going to do it. Will it? Okay, I'll do it. I want somebody to explain to me in the comments, on Twitter, at John Z Sports, what benefit there is to booing Mitch Trubisky. If there's any benefit, I want to hear it. Then we could talk about, well, maybe it's acceptable, but I don't see one. You're acknowledging you still have feelings for your ex. You're unable to realize, hey, I got a great quarterback in front of me who's going to be great. And you're disregarding the fact that this guy worked his butt off for years to try and be the guy. It didn't work. How's that his fault? He worked. He tried. He wasn't lazy. He had nothing handed to him. He worked his butt off. It didn't work. So be it. Move on. If you find a benefit to booing him, tell me about it. Maybe I'm overlooking it here. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm a media tap dancer, right? (laughs) There's no need to boo him. And I'm really disappointed that some people are going to do it. I mean, Tariq Cohen put out a tweet saying, don't boo him. A player saying, don't do it. People are still going to do it. Again, you're a fan. You could do whatever the hell you wanted again. Of course, without committing a crime. So, do what you see fit. But if you're on the fence or if you don't know any better and you don't know what to do, I suggest you don't do it. That doesn't mean cheer for Mitch, but there's no need to boo him. He didn't do bad for this team or this city. Nothing that he did was lazy or wrong. He worked. Won games, a couple of playoff appearances, Pro Bowl. And for the rest of his life, by the way, he's going to be haunted regardless. If he can't post a picture talking about his wife, how they got married, isn't that enough punishment? I'm asking, isn't that enough that he can't even post a picture about him and his wife getting married without trolls and people making fun of him? Oh, that's the only thing he could lock up. Really? Haven't you had enough?
Don't fool them. Remember the good times you had with them, yes, and the bad ones too, but don't fool them. It's over. Move on. New quarterback, new era. New great team, potentially. Why worry about an old flame? It's over. You broke up with him. Move on and focus on your new partner. More to come here on Sports Talk Chicago. My interview with George Offit comes up next. So stay tuned.